Geronimo Stilton, The Way of the Samurai. Dear rodent friends, do you know me? My name is Stilton, Geronimo Stilton. I run the Rodents Gazette, the most famous newspaper on Mouse Island. I'm also a best-selling author. I love to write about my amazing adventures. In fact, the one thing I'm going to tell you about right now will make your first ad on the end. It takes place in a mysterious location, but let me start from the beginning. It was a typical Saturday night. I was at home in my cozy mouse hole. I had just finished my typical Saturday night dinner. One large cheese pizza, one large mozzarella milkshake, and one large cheese danish. I put on my typical Saturday night outfit, PJs and cat fur slippers. Then I sank into my favourite poor chair and began leafing through my photo albums. I love my photo albums. They remind me of all the great trips I've taken. Yup, it's hard to believe that a scaredy mouse like me has had many incredible adventures all over the world. But I have, and along the way, I've made many wonderful new friends. I looked at a photo of me and two friends, Wild Willy and an ar archaeologist and Shorty Tao, a karate world championship. A while back, Shorty asked me, well, okay, she forced me to enter a competition in San Francisco, the Karate World Championship, and I won. I, sm I smiled. What an amazing adventure. I wrote all about it in my book, The Karate Mouse. I love to write about my real life experiences, especially when they happen in exciting places. Still, even though I love ha having adventures, I'm a homebody at heart. That's right. I'm not crazy about travelling, I hate living out of a suitcase, and I hate aeroplanes. I was thinking about how much I don't like travelling when the phone rang. Hello, is it Stilton here? Geronimo Stilton, I squeaked. Stilton, are you ready for adventure? Said a deep voice. I gulped. It was my treasure hunting friend, Wild Willy. The last time we were together was in the Black Hills of South Dakota. And let me just tell you, this is the reason they call him wild. Oh, well, I was just relaxing, I stammered, Willie snorted. Relaxing? You're sitting around like a catch potato, Stilton. I can see you in your pajamas and slippers. Did anyone ever tell you you're as exciting as a raw clam? He bellowed. Well, I, I began again. Well, I nothing, Willie interrupted. Now stop twisting your tail and listen up. I want you to meet me tonight at 8.30 at 18 South Paul Square. No ifs and all buts. And how do you know I was twisting my tail, I stammered. But there was no reply. Willie had hung up on me. What could I do? I quickly got dressed and ran to 18 South Paul Square. Wild Willie, who is he? Wild Willie is an archaeologist who loves adventure. He describes himself as a treasure hunter. But he doesn't actually have any care or hoot about the money. In fact, he donates all the archaeologist treasures he finds at a New Mouse City Museum. His motto, are you ready for adventure? If you answer yes, he'll reply, go with the adventure. His hobbies, studying ancient languages and doing sports and mountain climbing. His secret, he keeps a photo of his girlfriend in his shirt pocket next to his heart. When I reached South Paul Square, I looked around. What an unusual place. This was an odd-looking cobblestone courtyard with a garden filled with strange, exotic-looking plants. In the center of the garden was a fountain spouting jets of water onto round grey pebbles. The sound of the water hitting the pebbles made me sleepy, and for a moment I thought about taking a quick rat nap, but then I remembered I was supposed to be meeting Wild Willy. Where was he? I looked around. I saw lots of buildings facing the courtyard, including a karate dojo. Do you know what a karate dojo is? It's a place where mice practice karate. I noticed there was a poster on the front door. It said something about a convention. What was this? Why was my name listed on the poster? My stomach lunched as I took a closer look. The Zen Dojo is happy to present the largest convention on karate secrets ever, with practice demonstrations given by our amazing guest of honor, W.W. and his assistant, Geronimo Stilton. I tried to make out the name of the guest of honor, but I couldn't tell if it was initials, was it WW or some strange symbol. I took a poor step closer to see if I could figure it out, when suddenly a huge group of rodents appeared behind me. They began pushing and shoving so they could get into the dojo. 
Holy cheese! I thought that convention must really be interesting. I recognized a lot of reporters and photographers from New Mouth City, including new casters from the station top TV. I was still feeling confused, a little worried when suddenly two paws grabbed me roughly and dragged me into the dojo. It was Wild Willie. How do you like my friend's gym? Stilton, he squeaked. Before I could answer, he grabbed me by my whiskers and dragged me down a long hallway at the end, which was like a stage. Go on, Stilton, you're late, he told me, pushing me onto the stage. I had no idea what Willie was squeaking about. What was I late for? What was going on? Oh, I stood on the stage, feeling like a fool. While photographer snaps my picture, I looked for Willie, but he was gone. I was having trouble seeing with all the flashing cameras directed at me. At this point, the crowd began clapping and shouting. There he is! He's coming! That's him! They cheered. I turned red with embarrassment. I'm used to fans asking for my autograph after all my books and bestsellers, but I'm still a shy mouse at heart. Um, thank you, I mumbled, taking a bow. Then someone in the audience pointed at me. Hey, you move over! He's coming! He shouted. Uh, who's he? I asked, perplexed. At that exact moment, I heard a loud yell. Kia! I barely had any time to realize that the yell was that of someone who practices karate. And it's about to attack when I saw a mass of muscles dressed in white hurling himself across the stage. He was so fast, it looked as if he was practicing flying. I tried to move aside, but it was too late. A poor shot out and kicked me in the tail, sending me flying into the audience. Help! I cried. I found myself in the arms of a female. Yelped, I saw, rubbing my tail. The crowd applauded. It was only then it dawned on me that they were not cheering for me. They were cheering for the one who had taken me out. He was wearing a white karate uniform with a black belt. He had a black moustache. Do you know who I'm talking about? Yup, it's Wild Willie. Let me just say that Wild Willie is a remarkable athlete. Watching him practice in karate is like watching a flying dragon. Wild Willie turned towards the audience and bowed. Ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for coming to this convention dedicated to karate, an ancient martial art that allows mice to defend themselves without the use of weapons. The object of the sport is to shape the body, mind and spirit. The first thing karate teaches is respect for oneself and respect for the rep- opponent. And now, before we begin a demonstration, I would like to thank my Fabby Mouse assistant, Geronimo Stilton. Assistant? Who, me? I stammered. Wild Willie shot me a look and whispered, of course. Do you see anyone else on the stage whose name is Stilton? Now I just climb up and go with it. I shook my head. What am I supposed to do? I don't remember much about karate, I told Willie. He just smirked. Don't worry about anything, Stilton. Leave everything to me, he ordered. A minute later, Willie came racing towards me with three very swift moves. He flattened me completely. The crowd went wild. Woohoo! They cheered. Willie picked me up like a bag of cheese, puffs, and stood on my paws. You see, in only a few seconds, I was able to take out my opponent using just a few basic karate techniques. As long as you concentrate, you too can achieve these skills, he declared. Then Willie made sure everyone understood by demonstrating by demonstrating the three kicks again, sending me crashing to the floor. Oh, when would this nightmare end? In the meantime, the audience continued to cheer and squeak with delight. Yeah, good job, do it again, they cried. Ouch, <coughs> ouch, <coughs> I screamed in pain. Couldn't these mice see I was hurt? I tried to get Willie's attention, but he was too pumped up by the crowd. Not again, <laughs> I whimpered, but Willie kept kicking. Finally, when I was sure every, every bone in my body had, was broken, Willie stopped and bowed to the audience. And now a bandage break with Geronimo while we watch a video on karate, he announced. While everyone was watching the video, I tried slipping out the back door, but Willie grabbed me by the whiskers. This is a bandage break, not the end of the show, Stilton. And what's with all the whining? It's an honor to be my assistant. Do you know how many mice would kill to be in your position? He would scolded me. Would kill for it. I'm being killed, I thought. But out loud, I said, there are volunteers. Where are they? I'm gladly switching places with them. Willie shook his head. Forget it, Stilton, he squeaked. I'm doing it for your own good. Just try not to embarrass yourself in front of your friends. Chop, chop, and lotus snout. It's your dojo after all. And by the way, your family is here too. 
He pointed out a large rat with blonde fur and a slim rodent with a black ponytail. Next to them, I saw my entire family. My eyes nearly popped out of my head. Rats! I couldn't embarrass myself with all of them there. So I let myself be mangled by Wild Willie to the very end of the demonstration without complaint. Finally, he bowed to the audience, everyone applauded, and I slid down the stage, with every bone and my body creaking. I had been trampled on like a doormat and beaten up like a double cheese milkshake and bandaged from the tip of my whiskers to the tip of my tail. While the enthusiastic audience was leaving the dojo, the reporter shouted, Geronimo, tomorrow you'll be on the front page of all the papers. The producer of the top TV added, We're featuring Karate Special tonight in our world news segment. Our viewers love Wild Willy. I cringe. Just what I needed, my terrific face placed on every newspaper and television around the world. How embarrassing. Still, I didn't have time to think about it because Wild Willy slapped me super hard on the shoulder. Good job, Stilton. You were the perfect assistant out there, he said. Um, well, thank you. I did my best, or maybe my worst. What I mean is I did whatever I could, I babbled. I noticed Chop Chop and Lotus Snout staring at me intently. I think he's perfect, Willy, Chop Chop said. Yes, just a mouse for the job, Lotus Snout agreed. I had no idea what they were talking about. What job? Wild Willy grinned. Then he thumped me on the back, making my teeth rattle. Stilton! We've decided you need to get out more, he announced. What do you mean, I squeaked. A feeling of dread came over me. It was then that I noticed the rest of my family staring at me. Thea chimed in. We you think you're becoming a couch potato? When was the last time you took a trip? <laughs> well, it's been a while, I admitted. But I have so much to do at work, and you know that I hate traveling. Lily interrupted me. Oh, don't be such a travel baby, Stilton. Now are you ready for adventure? Yes or no? He shouted, I go. I wanted to say no. I mean, Willie's idea of adventure is my idea of torture. But everyone was staring at me. What could I do? I guess so, I muttered. Great. Go with the adventure. We're headed to Japan. Roared Wild Willie. Trap handed me a teensy weensy suitcase. This suitcase will all, is all you need your karate uniform, a toothbrush, and a tourist guide. Grandfather William added, Make me proud, grandson, grandson or else. Wild Willie chuckled, Isn't this great, Stilton? Now you'll have something to write about when you get back. That is, if you make it back alive, he said with a smirk. I tried not to think about the other possibility, as Benjamin planted a kiss on my snout. Have a good time, Uncle Geronimo, he squeaked. One hour later, I boarded a plane with Wild Willie, Chop Chop, and Lotus Now. We were on a long flight to Tokyo, the capital of Japan, then planned to head south to the island of Okinawa, where karate is said to have been born. During the flight, I flipped through the guide to Japan. What a fascinating country! Japan is an island lying off the east coast of Asia in the Pacific. It is made, of, it is made up of four main islands and numerous smaller islands. Japan is known as the land of the rising sun, because it lies to the east of China. The capital of Japan is Tokyo. At the airport, a chauffeur dressed in dark clothes greeted us. Wild Willie san? He asked as he bowed deeply. Mr. Shredpaws invited you to his house. He wants to talk with you, Wild Willie. Wild Willie then twirled his mustache and slowly blinked. Hmm, Shredpaws. I haven't heard that name in many years. How did he know we were coming, he asked, surprised. The driver bowed stone face. Shredpaws knows everything, he said. Oh, then take us to him, grumbled Wild Willie. The chauffeur bowed and said, please follow me. Then he led us to his car, the most luxurious limousine I had ever seen. It was extremely long, with a shiny black exterior and tinted glass windows. We arrived in Tokyo at dawn. It was breathtaking. Thousands of skyscrapers shimmered majestically under the first rays of the sun. The limo zoomed along the crowded streets, where frenzied cars circled the center of the city. I admired the mar marvelous ancient building and the, splendid, and the splendid gardens in the old section of Tokyo. What a magnificent city. I took one picture after another. Here are some of them. While the chauffeur drove, Wild Willie pulled us all together.
I want to tell you all the reason for this trip to Japan. We are about to have an adventure that may become very dangerous, he whispered. I shivered. The teacher who taught me karate many years ago asked me to help him save an ancient treasure, an important p parchment, Wild Willie explained. This piqued Lotus Snout's interest. Why is it so important, she asked. Because it holds an ancient karate secret, and someone is out to steal it, answered Wild Willie with a frown. Who? asked Lotus Snout. Wild Willie stroked his moustache. I don't know, but I bet we'll find out soon. Maybe it's Shredpaws, he mumbled. I was horrified. But then why did he, we, agree to go to his house? I squeaked, feeling a panic attack coming on. Willie just smiled. We need to find out what he wants. Maybe he can give us a clue to help our mission, he said. He said, look at it this way, Sultan. Now you have something to write about when you get home. That is, if you make it alive. Before I could jump out of the limo and run away squeaking with fear, we rolled up to an elegant house built in the traditional Japanese style. It was made out of wood with a large roof decorated with four dragons. Surrounding the house was a magnificent garden, complete with gurgling fountains, incredible rock formations and many bonsai trees. A large, flashy rodent with shifty eyes and a black topi on his head came to greet us. My name is Spencer Shredpaws. Welcome to the Fabby Mouse home, he announced arrogantly. Then he began to brag about himself. As you can see by my house, I'm a very rich and therefore a very important mouse here in Japan. You should also know I am a grand master of karate and I was a student of the Fabby Mouse. No mouse, he said. Wild Willie raised an eyebrow. I too have become a grand master of karate. And I too was a student of no mouse. But maybe you have forgotten his teachings. Being rich does not make you important, he declared. Shredpaws turned red with anger. But he stroked his topi and motioned for us to follow him. Wild Willie removed his boots. And I followed as I looked around it. I had the strange feeling that we were being watched by someone. From the windows I thought I was seeing mysterious dark shadows. I was still thinking about those shadows when Shredpaw's voice interrupted my thoughts. And now you will eat. My chef has prepared a sampling of the most exquisite Japanese dishes, complete with lots of wasabi, he declared. Wild Willie winked at me. Watch out for the wasabi, Stilton, he warned. Wasabi? What is that? But there was no time to ask. Before I knew it, we were seated at a low table covered with lots of small dishes filled with food. Chop, 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 tried to show me how to use the chopsticks. But it was no use. I tried too hard. I tried too hard to in imitate him, but the chopsticks kept slipping from my paws. First, I stuck one of the sticks into my eye. Then the other got stuck in my ear. Then both sticks got stuck up my nose. Meanwhile, Shredpaw's waiter kept bringing us more bowls filled with strange food. Rice rolls, little morsels of raw fish, rolls wrapped in seaweed, and a strange green paste. Watch out for the wasabi, Stilton, Wild Willie warned me again. Wasabi? What was that? I still had no idea. I tried my best to keep an open mind about eating all the different foods. After all, my great aunt Ratilda always told me, variety is the spice of life. When it comes to meals, but I have to admit, nothing seemed to have much flavour. Or what I would have given for a large cheese pizza. My stomach grumbled as I dreamed of the slice rat. Have you ever been there? They make the best pizza of all of Mouse Island. I had a feeling there was no slice rat in the area. Though, so I instead, I took a nibble of fish. Then I made a big mistake. I spread a piece of fish with a lump of the stre strange green paste. Wild really tried to stop me. Watch out for the wasabi, Stilton, he shout shouted. Too late, I had already swallowed it. I soon found out the wasabi was the name of the strange green paste. It was so spicy. Tears ran down my furs and flames shot out of my mouth, setting Shredpaw's topi on fire. Without blinking an eye, Wild Willie poured tea on Shredpaw's head to put out the fire. Oh, how humiliating. I tried apologizing to Shredpaw's, but he was livid. What is the matter with you, cheese brainy shriek? He stomped out of the room and returned wearing a new topi. Now listen up, Wild Willie-san. I don't know much your cheese brain friend here, but I know many things about you. 
I know you're a famous treasure hunter on Mouse Island and an expert in karate. I also know why you spent many years in Japan. This is why I've decided that you must help me. Recently, the ruined castle of the Roaring Dragon were found in the Roaring Dragon Valley. According to an ancient legend, a parchment of incredible value is hidden in the castle. Shredpool continued. It is said to give great power to the one possessing it. I want you to explore the castle and, um, and find me the parchment. I must have it. Just name your price. Wild Willy rolled his eyes. You seem to know a lot about me, Shredpool, but you forgot one important detail. I am not for sale. Shredpaws whipped out his checkbook and a diamond studded gold pen. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Willie. Every mouse can be bought. Just write a figure down, he insisted. Wild Willie stood up. Forget it, Shredpaws, he said. I said no. I am an archaeologist with a passion for ancient civilizations. E even if I did find the parchment, I wouldn't give it to you. I'd give it to a museum. I don't like looking for treasures to make money. I enjoy for treasures so that everyone can learn about them and learn something about the past. Shredpaws was so angry, he looked like he was about to explode. I am warning you, Wild Willy. I am a very rich and powerful mouse. If you don't help me, I promise you will be a very sorry rodent, he shrieked. I thought I would faint with fright, but Wild Willy stood his ground. I told you, I'm not for sale, he replied. We left in a taxi. As we were driving away, I spotted the mysterious shadows again behind the house. Still, there was no time to worry about them. We had to run to the station and take the train to Nagoya, where a ferry would then take us to Okinawa, our original destination. We boarded the train just in time. I stared out the window and spotted the dark, mysterious shadows again. They were the same ones I had seen at Shredpaw's house. As I peered more closely, I realized the shadows were actually seven muscular rodents, wearing black clothing and masks. They, sh they shined their eyes dangerously. As the train began to leave the station, I spotted a little mouselet on the platform, waving goodbye to the train. Bye bye, I called, waving my port at the little mouse. Chop Chop quickly pulled me away from the window. What are you doing? Why are you waving at those ninjas? They're Japanese warriors. They're experts in the ancient martial arts and very dangerous, he squeaked. But I wasn't waving at them, I said, trying to explain. Lotus Snout shook his head. You're waving. Angered them, he she moaned. Wild Willy just stared out the window with a funny smile on his face. Hey look, the ninjas are running after us, he observed calmly. I wonder if they'll get on the train. That would make it a pretty interesting trip, especially for you, Stilton, my teeth battled from fright. I want to get off. I want to take the first plane back to New Mouse City, I cried. I ran down the narrow aisle, but the train was going at crazy speed. Chop Chop grabbed me by the tail. Are you nuts, Stilton? You can't get off. This train is called Shinkansen, also known as a bullet train. It travels at a speed of 186 miles an hour. I went back to my seat, feeling terrified as trees, houses and mouses shot by at a warp speed. My head began to pound. I need to relax. I tried reading my tourist guide about J Japan. Too bad. I opened to the section about ninja, talking about scary. Ninja were warriors and spies of the, at the service of the Japanese military commanders, or shoguns. The ninja code rally completing a mission by whatever necessary, which included sneak attacks and poisoning. They, were, they wore black clothing as dark as night and were expert at all martial arts. They used more than 20 types of killer weapons, including swords, daggers, arrows, poison arrow tips, javelins and pikes. As I was reading, cold shivers ran down my fur. I thought I could see strange figures in the train compartment. Had the ninjas boarded the train? Cheese niblets. I was a wreck. Finally, the high-speed train stopped at Nagoya, and from there we boarded a ferry for Naha, the capital of Okinawa. It was a never-ending trip. At Naha, we got on a bus that took us to a place in the middle of nowhere. The sun was setting behind the mountains as we continued on foot to a little village located between the mountains. It had been a long time since Wild Willie had visited the, this place. He couldn't remember the exact road leading to the house of the teacher, Noble Mouse. After lots of wrong turns, we finally arrived at an ancient wooden house built on top of a steep cliff. 
There was someone sitting in front of the house, but by now it was getting dark, so it was hard to see his or her face. As the rodent approached, we called out, May I help you? We are looking for the honourable karate teacher, Noble Mouse, who lives in this village. Wild Willy said, Why? the rodent asked. Without thinking, I blurted out, We're here on a secret mission. Chop Chop stopped me with a jabbing elbow to the side. Lotus now kicked me in the tail, and Wild Willy pulled one of my whiskers. The shadow moved. I trembled with fear. Then I realised it was just an old rodent wearing a very gentle smile and a white karate uniform. He laughed. Don't be mad at your friend, he sensed he could trust me. I'm the teacher, Noble Mouse. Who are you? the rodent asked. Wild Willy bowed until he touched the ground with his whiskers. Wild Willy was taught by this master when he was very young. Now, after many years, he has reunited with him. Teacher, many years have gone by, but my heart has stayed the same. I promise you could always count on me, and now here I am to keep my pro promise. I am a red dragon. He rolled up his sleeve, revealing a fierce-looking red dragon tattoo. The old rodent smiled, widened, and a tear glistened in the corner of one eye. Red dragon? Is it really you? He murmured. Wild Willy knelt before him. Yes, teacher, it is. I, although now they call me Wild Willy, you sent for me, so I have come. Noble Mouse beamed. I knew, I knew I could count on you, Red Dragon. He said, "You were always such a good student." You were courageous and filled with fire, like a dragon with a strong and generous heart. Wild Willy and Noble Mouse hugged each other affectionately. Then Noble Mouse invited us into his house. Now we will have a tea ceremony to help restore your energy, he declared. I was so excited, I let out a happy squeak. A cup of tea sounded great, and maybe a sandwich. I was starving. The little tea ceremony is a spiritual ritual. You don't stuff your face, she warned. Noble Mouse led us to a small, clean, and quiet room. On a table, I spotted a striking arrangement of flowers, arranged by Ikebana. Ikebana is the ancient Japanese art of cut flower arrangements. On a wall, I saw a collection of katana, samurai swords. Following Noble Mouse's example, we all knelt down on a small table. Then the elder mouse poured each, us, each of us a green tea of cup. I took a sip of my tea. Trying not to think about my aching knees, the floor was so hard, my knees were already killing me. I couldn't wait to get up and stretch my paws. But just then, Noble Mouse announced, I will now tell you the legend of the three samurai, so that you will understand why it is important to save the parchment. The moon was already shining in the dark sky as the old teacher began telling his story. Many centuries ago, in a secret and far away place, this is a mysterious and valuable parchment that held an incredible secret of karate. It was so powerful, it could make the strong weak and the weak strong. One day, however, the evil head of the ninja tried to steal it. So a wise character teacher asked three valiant samurai to hide it in a safe place. Those three courageous samurai took the parchment to a far away valley. There they found the castle of the Roaring Dragon, which belonged to a wise shogun named Hanshi. The samurai hid the parchment in a secret place in the castle, so no one would ever find it. According to the legend, the parchment must remain hidden in the castle until three other valiant samurai would find it. Only then can its secret be revealed to everyone. The teacher sighed. For a long time, the castle of the Roaring Dragon was just a legend. But now, it was found in the ruins of a valley, bearing its name. And I'm afraid that there may be many evil people who would try to abuse it and use its immense power. This is why I called you, Red Dragon, I mean. Wild Willy, I need your help to save me, to save this treasure. Wild Willy nodded. Of course I will help you. I'll do anything to save an ancient treasure, he squeaked. Everyone smiled except for me. I couldn't. My face was frozen in an expression of pain. It felt like someone was sticking knives into my knee. I had to get up, but to my horror, Noble Mouse said, Now that the tea has restored us in body and spirit, we will stay here all night and decide how we will save the parchment. Stay here all night? No! I screamed silently. My knees couldn't take another minute. <clears throat> I just need to stand up for a second, I said, excusing myself from the table. I tried to get up, but my knees went straightened. I tripped over my paws and grabbed the display case full with swords. 
The swords tumbled out of the case, cutting out my whiskers in a clean sweep. I crashed into the ikebana, and a thorn got stuck in my fur. As I was trying to remove it, I knocked over the kettle and burned my tail, boiling tea. Hopping away, I smacked my head against a gong until I saw stars. Holy cheese. I sobbed for a moment, then I fainted. When I came to, I was completely confused. Instead of my regular clothes, I was wearing a floral Japanese tunic. I looked like I just came from an ancient Japanese movie. I massaged my head. What a lump. I was thinking about getting an ice pack when I turned and saw three samurai. Warriors in complete armor staring at me. Help, I want to live, I shrieked. The first samurai rolled his eyes. Cut the drama, Stilton, he scolded. The ninja out to steal the secret parchment. It's up to us to save it. I realized the samurais were Wild Willie and his friends. Huh? I mumbled. Why are you dressed like that? The second samurai snickered. Because this is a dream, Stilton, and in the dream, we are samurai. It was Chop Chop. Oh, a dream? How nice. Can I be samurai too? I squeaked. The third samurai was slim and graceful. It was Lotus Snout. Sorry, Stilton. Even in your dreams, you'll always be just an ordinary mouse, she giggled. Rats, I murmured. Wild Willie could tell I was disappointed. I'll tell you what, Stilton. I'll keep my eye on you. If you work hard, maybe at the end of the stream, you can become a real samurai, he suggested. Then he mounted the saddle of a black horse and shouted, Let's move! The ninja are after us. We've got to hide this parchment in a safe place. I gulped. I wasn't much of a horseback rider. Plus, I was afraid of the dark. But what could I do? I knew Wild Willie was keeping an eye on me, so I climbed onto a horse and followed my friends. We travelled under a full moon, changing directions many times. So the ninja would be would have trouble following us. Maybe it was my imagination, but I felt like I saw the ninja shadows everywhere we rode. Cheese niblets, it's tough being a scary mouse. Finally, we came to a lonely valley lost amongst the islands, where a waterfall tumbled down from a rock shaped like a head of a dragon. We'll go under the waterfall, it's a secret passageway that will take us to the roaring dragon valley. Wild Willie said, I shivered the waterfall. Tumbling down from the top of the rock sounded exactly like the roar of a dragon. Slim Swiss rose. I was so scared I thought I might faint, but I had to go on. Wild Willie was watching me. I took a deep breath and rolled under the falls on the other side. We came to a lush green valley. A castle rose in the distance. Then the castle will be a safe place for the parchment. It belongs to a wise shogun. His name is Hanshi, which means teacher of the trades, Wild Willie explained. Soon we reached the castle and everyone stood off their horses and went back inside. I, on the other hand, fell on my horse, tripped over the tail and stumbled after them. Once inside, I found myself in a room decorated with colourful silk drapes. At one end of the room, it was a stage. In the centre of it was a regal looking rodent, wearing a red tunic with a dragon embroidered on it. The red rodent stared at us with a deep, penetrating eyes. It was then that I noticed that two massive gold dragon heads in front of his chair and two more on the armrests. I guess they rolled like his dragons. Two rows of fully armed guards stood watching on our every move. I tried not to look scared, but I was terrified. Meanwhile, Wild Willie bowed before the shogun in greeting. He took out the rolled parchment and bowed his head again. Honorable Shogun Hanshi, Master of the Masters, we are here to ask for your help. How can I help? asked the Shogun. We are being followed by the head of the ninja, who wants this parchment containing an ancient karate secret. May we hide it in your castle? The Shogun Hanshi thought for a moment, and then bowed his head and said, Let it be so. He waved his paw and then the guards left the room. Then he rested his arms on the throne's golden armrests and pressed down heavily on them. We heard a creaking and suddenly the walls before us opened up, revealing a secret room. The shogun produced seven keys, then opened seven chests, neatly in one of each other. I will hide the parchment here, in these chests in the secret room. No one will ever find it. Its secret will be preserved for hundreds of years, until it is time for it to be revealed, the shogun said. Then he turned to us. You have been very courageous. One, one can see you are a real samurai, he remarked. 
<clears throat> well, I'm actually not a real samurai. I'm just an ordinary mouse, I confessed. The shogun looked deeply into my eyes and murmured, I can fix that. Then he asked in a loud voice, Who will vouch for the courage of this mouse? Wild Willy took a step forward. I will vouch for him, he said, even though he's basically a scary mouse. On this journey, he faced his fears to help protect the parchment. He has the heart of a real samurai. The shogun stared at me. Do you promise to keep your spirit strong and so always follow the rules of a samurai? Yes, I stammered. Then the shogun stood up and announced, You are now a samurai. I was so honoured. I died deeply to thank him, but I ended up tripping over my tail and smashing my head on the floor. Oh! I came to because somebody was slapping my face, as if it was a punching bag at the Iron Poor Gym in New Mouse City. Wake up, Stilton, a voice instructed. It was hard for me to get up. I was out of it. My head was spinning and whiskers were trembling. What's going on? Was I awake or was I dreaming? Confused, I asked, where am I? Why are you slapping me? Am I still a real samurai? I looked around and my eyes opened wide. I was no longer in the castle of the Roaring Dragon. I was back at the Karate Masters, Noble Master's house. The tea kettle was upside down on the floor. The antique swords were scattered next to it and there was a huge dent in the gong. Chop Chop, Lotus Now and Wild Willy stood looking down at me. They were no longer dressed in the samurai outfits. Instead of a sword, Lotus Now touched the cell phone. He's awake! Should I still call the ambulance? She asked the others as they, as they examined the waterfall-sized lump in my head. Wild Willy laughed silently under his whiskers. I think he'll be fine, right Stilton? That was a great show though. My favorite part was when you slammed the gong of the fairy skull. Boo eye, he chuckled. Who knew you had such a hard head? Just then, it all came back to me. The tea ceremony, my aching knees, trying to stand up, knocking over the tea kettle, and slamming my head into the gong. Youch! I was trying to ignore the ringing in my head when Wild Willy voice broke into my thoughts. Okay, enough entertainment. Let's shake a paw before the ninja catch up to us. We're off to the Roaring Dragon Valley. We need to find the parchment. It's hidden somewhere inside the castle there, he said. At that, I instantly forgot about my aching head. I know exactly where the parchment is. I saw it in my dream, I squeaked. It's in a special room in the castle. Chop Chop and Lotus snouted. It was only a dream, Geronimo. It wasn't real, they said. But Wild Willy really looked directly in my eyes and said, Hmm, it does sound strange, but I want to trust you, Stilton, he said. I promise you won't be sorry, I squeaked. Everyone followed me. It was dawn as we took off down the road. Noble Mouse stayed behind to alert all the farmers in his village to the ninja who were coming. He promised to join us as soon as he had gathered everyone. With the first rays of the morning sun, we arrived in the lonely valley. I recognized the waterfall tumbling down from a rock shaped like the head of a dragon. I went under the falls and headed straight through the secret passageway. At the other side of the falls was the roaring dragon valley, and beyond that, Hinashi's castle. Everyone was just like in the dream. Everything was exactly the same, but the castle was in ruins, as if hundreds and hundreds of years had gone by. The roof of the castle was crumbling, and red paint had peeled away. Large overgrown bamboo shrubs swayed fawnly in the wind, and the stairs were cracked and caked with dirt. We began to walk towards the castle. Our steps echoed on the big grey stones in the path. My heart was pounding a mile a minute. Did I mention I hate spooky stuff? Just then, Wild Willy murmured, Are you ready for the adventure? Yes! The others answered immediately. As for me, I was too busy biting my nails. Oh, how I wished I were at home in a comfy, cosy mouse hole. We, were, we entered the castle, but before we closed the front door behind us, we checked to see if the ninja were following us. Luckily, there was no ninja in sight. It was as dark as night in the castle, and then the air was thick and musty. I lit a candle with shaky paws. I tried to concentrate on not burning myself. I looked around. Dust covered every object in the room, and cobwebs hung from the ceiling. Still, the room looked like the same as I remembered it from my dream. Even if time had destroyed much of it, I recognized the stage with red chair the shogun had sat in, and the arm set wrists were shaped like the heads of dragons. Just like in my dream. If everything was like the dream, then the parchment had to be there. In my dream, the shogun pushed the armrest of the chair, 
in a secret room appeared. I mumbled. Then I sat slowly down on the chair. My whiskers trembled. I was so nervous, I pushed hard on the two armrests. Nothing happened. My heart sank to my paws. But then I heard a tiny creak. Then another creak. And another creak. On the wooden wall before us, a tiny crevice appeared. I squeezed, I squeezed myself through. Follow me, I shouted. On the other side of the crevice was a small room, which I remembered well. Light had not pe penetrated the room until now, so the colours were not faded, and it seemed that time had stood still. In a corner was an antique lacquered wooden chest and a ring of keys. The chest was identical to the one in my dream. I opened it up with a key and took out another chest, then another, and another, then another, and then another. Finally, I got to the last prize chest. I took out the parchment, which was tied with a red silk ribbon. When I saw it, I was speechless. It was identical to the one I had seen in my dream. Here's the legendary parchment. The only difference was that it was yellowed and fragile, as if years of even centuries had gone by since my dream. I was so excited, I could hardly squeak. I could hardly believe my dream had turned out to be a reality. And now that, my, and now that we had found the parchment, we could finally discover its secret. Wild Willie took the parchment, read it, and muttered, muttered, Interesting, very interesting. So what's the secret in the parchment, I asked. He looked at me, then back to the parchment. Hmm, interesting, very interesting, he said again. I twisted my tail in a knot. Okay, we get that it's interesting, but what does it say, I insisted. Willie blinked. Actually, it's a lot more interesting than you might think, he continued. I bit my tongue to stop myself from screaming. But it was no use. I couldn't take it anymore. Tell me, I shrieked. Tell me what it says, Wild Willie twirled his moustache and stared at me. Really, Stilton, you need to learn how to have patience. Do you know the, the meaning of the word? He said with a smirk. I tried to calm down, but I was feeling so impatient I thought I might explode. In a cloud of fur, finally, Wild Willie held out the parchment. Unfortunately, I couldn't read a thing. There was a lot of Japanese writing and a drawing showing a figure with red dots on it. This parchment explains all about pressure points. It is said that in the body has certain areas that correspond to centers of energy. Touching them at a specific point can heal or immobilize a rodent. Willie said, This ancient technique was used by a samurai long ago. He studied the parchment intensely. Let's see if it works. Come here, Stilton, he commanded. I blinked. Do you really have to try it, I whined. Of course, Willie said, shaking his head. Don't be such a scaredy mouse. Thrilled, Chop Chop and Lotus Snap shouted. Yes, come on. Yes, 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 yes. Let's try it. Before I knew it, Wild Willie lightly brushed his paw against my chin. Within seconds, I snapped to the floor like a brick of stale cheese. Everybody cheered. It works. I sat up and rubbed my aching tail. Why do I always have to be the assistant, I mumbled. But of course, no one was listening. Wild Willie had begun translating the rest of the parchment. It says, this ancient and mysterious technique is called Tuiti, he said. Tuiti is a traditional karate fighting technique. It is based on attacking certain pressure points on the body by grabbing the opponent. Pressure point must be hit at the correct angle. It is used in self-defense. It allows the weak to overcome the strong and gives the unarmed a chance to defend themselves when attacked. It's not based on force, but on agility, swiftness, and knowledge of the pressure point. It's to be used only in self-defense and never to attack someone. At this, Wild Willie nodded. That's so true. My karate teacher always said, the wise mouse values peace, not conflict. Willie had us memorize all the pressure points. There were tons of them all over the body. Who knew? We were still checking on the pressure points when a voice cried out, stick up your paws. We turned to see a rodent with evil eyes. It was shred paws. He, had followed by, he was followed by seven rodents dressed in black and armed to the teeth. The ninja! I felt faint with fear. How could we defend ourselves? There were eight of them and only four of us. Plus, they were armed. Headlines flashed across my brain. Stilton sliced by ninja swords. Puny publisher pummeled in Japan. But just then, Willie whispered, Remember the secret of the parchment. We began defending ourselves using the technique we had learned. One by one, ninja fell to the ground like lumpy old cheese rinds. A few minutes later, Master Nobomouse and all the farmers in his village showed up to help. Back, 
But thanks to the secret of the parchment, the weak had conquered the strong. We were safe. The ninja were tied up and taken away. As Shredpo squeaked angrily, That parchment should have been mine! 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 Then he stamped his paws and began walking and wailing like a spoiled mouselet. Wild Willy snickered. Oh, stop your blabbering, Shred Paws. Did you really think you would get the parchment? It's a treasure from the past. That means it's not yours or mine. It belongs to everyone. Noble Mouse nodded. Very wise, Red Dragon. We will donate this parchment to the Mo Museum of Rodent History in New Mouse City. Wild Willy bowed. So be it, Master, he said. And so it was. We returned to Mouse Island and donated the parchment to the Museum of Rodent History. Now it's there to, for everyone to enjoy. I give you my word, or my name isn't Geronimo Stilton. After my trip, I took a few days off and then I went back to work at the Rodents Gazette. My grandfather, William Shortpaws, Thea, Benjamin, Trap, and all my co-workers were there to greet me. Word of our adventures in Japan had already reached New Mass City. Hooray, Geronimo. Welcome back. Great job for fighting those ninjas. While everyone was cheering, Grandfather pulled me aside. Okay, that's enough partying, Grandson. Now get back to work. You finally had a decent adventure, and I want you to write about it. Right now. I want it done by early next week. Do you understand? Get cracking. What could I do? I locked myself in the office and began writing like a mad mouse. The following week, I finished my new book. Yup, that's right. It's a book you're reading right now. The Way of the Samurai. Theo was the first to read it. Good for you, Geronimo, she said when she was done. I knew you needed a new adventure and that the trip to Japan was perfect for you. I was right as usual. What else is new, I sighed. My sister likes to take credit for everything. For a while, everything was back to normal. I went to work came home and relaxed with a book in my cozy mouse hole. Then one night I decided to take a walk by the docks. Before I found myself in the little courtyard at South Pool Square, the garden looked the same, but there was a new outdoor restaurant. I, as, as I strolled closer, I noticed the rodents were eating raw clams. Then that's what got me thinking about Wild Willie's words. Stilton, you're as exciting as a raw clam. I grinned to myself. Well, that was before we went to our adventure to Japan. Now I knew I could be strong and courageous, just like a real samurai. When I reached the Karate Dojo, I peered inside. I saw Chop Chop and Lotus Snout training with my sister Thea and my friend Bruce Hyena in the front of the room. I even saw my little nephew Benjamin and his little friend Bugsy Bugsy taking lessons with other young rodents. I couldn't believe they were all learning karate as I watched lots of students carrying sports bag push past me and headed into the dojo for their own karate lesson. For a minute, I thought about my comfy poor chair at home, then looked at my friends and family inside the dojo. They were laughing and learning and getting stronger, putting one paw before the other. I followed the students inside, seeing my, me, Chop Chop, Lotus Now, Hyena, Thea, Baby Bonsai, Benjamin and Bugsy Bugsy ran to greet me. Geronimo is here, they squeaked, then I saw Wild Willy in the corner. What took you so long, Stilton, he said with a smile. From, day, from that day on, things changed. Three times a week I took karate lessons and even earned my black belt. I'm now more exciting than a raw clam. Everyone was very proud of me and after that I went on to many more exciting adventures with Wild Willy. Was I scared? Of course I was. But I tried to remember what I had learned in Japan about courage and the heart and the incredible way of the samurai.